And welcome into the Bud Light UC Davis Football Coaches Show. We are down here at Woodstock's Pizza in downtown Davis. Joined by the head coach for the UC Davis Aggies, Dan Hawkins. And of course, special week. It is the 66th annual Causeway Classic coming up this Saturday at Hornet Stadium. A 2 o'clock kickoff as the Aggies and the Hornets renew their rivalry. We'll get into that over the next hour. We're going to have a lot of seniors who will be playing their last game, including Jake Mayer who, of course, set the all-time yardage record last Saturday in the game versus Montana State. We'll also hear from the captain on the defensive side, Nasa Nessie, along with Jordan Franklin. Dan, it's our last show of the year. Hard to believe we've made it through 12 shows this season. It goes fast. I learned a long time ago, everybody said, uh, hey, are you glad recruiting's over? Are you glad spring ball's over? And I go, no, because everything will happen fast enough. So... It's amazing. It seems like I just got here the other day, and we're already through year number three. It does go very fast. And, of course, uh, Sacramento State, a very special game. The Causeway is always special to end the year. Saturday, a tough loss at home, 17, uh, or excuse me, it was not 17-14. You're up 17-14, 27-17. We wish it was 17-14. Yes, we could have ended the game right there at 17-14. Didn't work out that way. Um, obviously, a game in which you guys had a lot of opportunity, had a lot of yardage, had a lot of uh, possessions in the red zone, just weren't as efficient as you wanted to, be, wanted to be at the end of the day. Three plays a game. I've been saying this for a long time. People get bored with it. They want to have a whole another dialogue. <clears throat> we played a lot of really good football teams. We played a lot of teams really tough. Uh, but we've got to be able to capture some details. And that, that goes on me, too. I probably should have kicked the field goal when we are down in the end zone, by the end zone there, and we had it in fourth and one. So that that's all starts with me. Uh, but we did we played hard. I thought our guys battled. And uh, it, was, <clears throat> it was, I think it was a 17-14 game with eight minutes to go, something like that. No, 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 it wasn't. About 12 minutes to go yeah, in that fourth quarter when they kicked that field goal. Yeah, yeah they tie it up to tie it up so uh but that that's the difference we give up a couple big long plays uh we had an interception um we're not as good in third down as maybe as we wanted to or for the first time in a long time we were not 100 percent in the red zone um because we had the field goal blocked yep uh so got to clean those things up we played some really good football teams i think uh, probably six or seven of those guys will be in the playoffs and uh, we'll get to watch so uh we'll go back to the drawing board and Start from square one again. Yeah, you look at the uh, FCS poll that, that came out, and for the top eight teams are all Big Sky teams that you did play. And then, of course, early in the year, you took on Cal. It was an extremely uh, difficult schedule. You, you battled with all of them. And as you mentioned, it, it comes down to just a few plays. It comes down, you like to talk about the attention to detail. Well, it's not so much the attention to detail because we have that. It's, yeah. it's, it's the actualization um, but that all falls on us as, as teachers and coaches in, in our classroom. And uh, it's not that our guys don't have an extreme want to or an extreme attention to it, because they do. Uh, we kind of went from, hey, surprising some people, to, hey, winning the championship, to, hey, now you got to back it up. So we all have to learn the stages of growth in our program and understand what happens when you um, wear the target on your back. And... You, this is how it is in the big sky, and this is how it is in competitive football. Uh, we have a lot of teams in this league that won national championships before, and, hey, to get there, you're going to have to get out of your own conference. Eastern went to the national championship last year and not going to be in the playoffs this year. Um, <clears throat> so that's just how we have to train. We have to think. We have to capture that. We have to understand that and in everything we do. And, of course, uh, Jake Mayer just walked in. It was a special day for him. Being senior day, of course, and being able to celebrate his last time at UC Davis Health Stadium on the field with his family, and then breaking the all-time yardage throwing record uh, from the great G.T. O'Sullivan. It was great to see that happen, and of course, just another accomplishment in the long line of accomplishments for this outstanding senior. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of players at UC Davis right now who will go down probably as, if you, uh, I know they're picking an all-decade team right now but if you picked an all-time team you're going to see some of these guys obviously keelan would would be on the all-time team and you got to think jink would be in there somewhere and it's quite a credit to tim plow our offensive coordinator who mentors him and and obviously jake for the work that he's put in and in, in a school that's uh highly regarded when it comes to quarterback legacy and tradition and performance 
um, he has met and exceeded uh, all those levels. And it certainly is our pleasure every day just to be around the guy because his attention to detail, his, his rage to master is second to nobody. Uh, so we're fortunate to have him. And then, of course, Lonzi had another big day, and I think Lonzi's going to go down as one of the best tailbacks ever to play at UC Davis. And you're seeing Wes Priest uh, this year as well as a senior. He'll go down as one of the one of the best tight ends at UC Davis. So a lot of real marquee players running through our program right now. Yep, absolutely. And we should mention you have uh, generations of your family here today for the, the coaches show as well. I got, number, I got number nine over here. Yeah, I got my man, Dakota James. Uh, he's number nine. And, uh, yeah, my wife and my daughter-in-law, Betsy. So, Is he going to be a fullback one day, or what do you think? Drew's got some length to him, and my wife's side of the family has a little length. We think yeah. he's got some length right now. I don't think he's going to be a fullback. That would be Tate, who's uh, my daughter, Brittany. Okay. Uh, Tate's the fullback in the family. I, I think uh, Dakota's probably he probably going to be a little longer. He might be kind of in that tight end receiver. His dad, tall, skinny guy, he was a quarterback receiver. So uh, we'll see. Yeah, and of course, Misty, your your father-in-law, her dad. We know he played some hoops, so he might have multiple sports. In he him. was a hooper in North Dakota. That's Drew, my son. He gets his height from that side of the family. So, Misty could play a little hoops. She was a hurdler back in the day. We're talking with Dan Hawkins here. It's the Bud Light UC Davis Football Coaches Show coming to you from Woodstocks in downtown Davis. And and coach, I know you always talk about the philosophy of being aggressive. And when you you know, all season long, you've gone for it a lot on fourth down. You've had a lot of success on fourth down. Sometimes you haven't had as much success on fourth down. So walk us through that and your thought process uh, from Saturday. Well, obviously it wasn't good because <laughs> we didn't get it. Um, I have a lot of confidence. I had a lot of confidence in the play that we called on the goal line, and we did have it. It was open. We had to throw the ball over the top just a little bit. But we were a little off, and uh, I'm sure everybody, including you guys in the booth, are going, ooh. Mm. Um, like we were, but maybe discretion being the better part of Valley, you kick the field goal there. Later in the game, again, I had a lot of confidence in our offense, and when we had fourth and about six inches to go, and I feel strongly about our O-line and Lonzi to be able to get it. And then I also thought defensively we were playing pretty good football, and we actually held up pretty well after that. Um, but again, you know, you, you second get yourself after, not necessarily in the moment. I just know from coaching long enough, if you want to get your guys to play not, they don't want to, you don't want them to play not to lose. They have to play to win. And you try to just break the chains a little bit there. And sometimes there's some growth, uh, some growth pains there. But uh, I'm probably not very smart in that situation on Saturday. Well, and it's always easy to second guess after you know the results of everything. But in the moment, it's certainly different. And uh, as you said, a lot of times throughout the year, you've had a lot of success on that. It's more of a philosophy than it is, you know, as much as anything else, isn't it? It is. And last year we played Idaho State, and we didn't kick the field goal in overtime. We scored a touchdown. Uh, we went for two against Eastern Washington. <laughs> so uh, we went for the win. Uh, but I want our guys to play with that unbridled passion. And uh, I think in order – to get them to play like that, you have to coach like that, and you have, they have to know that you believe in what they can do. Um, if you're playing it safe all the time, it's a tough way to live. I don't think it's a great way to play. It's To me, it's not a great philosophy. Yep, and of course, last year, it, it seemed like everything went your way. This year, you, you kind of went through the journey, and you, you went through a lot of adversity, and, and sometimes that's just the difference from year to year, it seems like. I would say everything went our way last year because – they end, we, well, we went ahead against Eastern, and then they ended up scoring yes. with the late to the field. So it go, goes back and forth both ways. Uh, Coach Silker would tell you luck is infatuated with the efficient, and luck is where our, you know preparation meets opportunity, and I believe all of those things. And um, you can't blame weather or uh, opponents or officials or anybody else. You kind of have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, how can we play better and perform better and execute better? Yep, and I, I know you talk about everything being the process and focusing on the process, and I'm assuming this week is another week. You're focusing in on the process. You know you have a game on Saturday. You know it's a big game versus Sacramento State. How did you talk to your team early in the week? Well, it's really about finishing. I, I talk to these guys all the time about me and being a man of principles, and uh, it's not about winning. It's not about making more money. It's about not about getting a bigger house or big, bigger salary. It's about being a man of principle. And, and being a finisher and <clears throat> starting what you finish. And I told them at some point they're all going to be dads and their sons are going to play Little League and want to quit in the middle of the year. And don't let them quit. Make them finish. Make them finish what they start. And we talk about starting fast and finishing strong. And I hope when our guys get out in the working world and when it gets to be about uh, 4 
10 and when everybody else goes daydreaming and playing on their phones and kind of can't wait till 5 o'clock, I hope our guys keep grinding and work till 5.15 and then say I'm ready to go home and, and they finish. They finish strong. And that's just a – Again, I think that's just a philosophy, and it's it's part of who we are, and and that's who we are. We're we're finishers, so it doesn't matter whether we're playing Sac State or somebody else. We've got one more game on the schedule. We want to play well. We want to put our best foot forward. Yeah, and obviously Sacramento State's having a very good year, eight and three overall, five and two, or correction, six and one in the Big Sky Conference. They're trying to win a Big Sky Conference championship and get a first round bye uh, with a win on Saturday. So there's a lot in the mix for them. Obviously, you're playing for Aggie Pride. You're playing to get a win against a rival. You're also playing a little bit of a spoiler role on Saturday. Yeah, and again, that's kind of externalizing when you say, "Hey, you're going to play the spoiler." Uh, and I, and I, I know those things are fun when you externalize it, but that's not. You have to control what you can control. They, uh, Troy Taylor's done a great job with those guys, and Kevin Thompson and uh, Elijah Dodson and those guys. They're they've got they're loaded. They got one of the better quarterbacks, running backs, receivers in the in the uh, in the conference. And Obina is a is a really really solid pass rusher. Leads the conference in sacks. Uh, so. But Troy's uh, walked into some really good talent, and he's done a, they've done a great job developing it. Yeah, it seems like uh, in terms of just the year, they're, they're having a lot of breaks go their way. They, the Northern Arizona game, they recover an onside kick, go down and score. Kind of almost the year that UC Davis had last year with some of those victories. Yeah, but you get it. you got to create their own luck. I mean, they went back there with, a, with, the, with their other backup quarterback yep. who used to be here, Jake Dunaway. And um, so Thompson was hurt, and they were able to kind of go on the road and get a win, and that's not easy to do. Not at all. And obviously it was senior day on Saturday, so you, you saw your – uh, 18 seniors their last day in uniform at uc davis health stadium that's always a special moment yeah it's interesting we didn't have senior day back when i was there and uh, there i told him i said hey let's not get too teary-eyed about yeah. this deal we still have another game to play and um and we have a life to live so uh it's a good chapter in their in their uh in their lives and hopefully we've created some memories and created some positive powerful uh, impact on them as they go forward into the world um, try to make a make a better planet for us all. All right, Coach, we are going to let you down for a, a couple of segments here. We're going to hear from Jake Mayer. We're going to talk about him and coming up his final game. Then we're going to hear the defensive side, Nasa Nessie, Jordan Franklin as well. We'll bring you back. We'll focus in on the Hornets a little bit later in the show. This is the UC Davis Bud Light Football Coaches Show. We're live from Woodstock's Pizza right here, Sports 1140 KHTK. And welcome back into the Bud Light UC Davis Football Coaches Show with Dan Hawkins. Scott Marsh with you here. We'll take you for the next 45 minutes or so, getting you ready for the big game on Saturday. It is the 66th annual Causeway Classic presented by Pepsi as the Aggies take on the Sacramento State Hornets. Two o'clock kick from Hornets Stadium. A couple of players who will be playing their final game in their Final Causeway Classic with us now. The captain on the defensive side, Nas Nessie, and the defensive lineman, Jordan Franklin. Nas, Jordan, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Really appreciate it. How are you guys doing? Doing well. Doing they, well. Uh, thanks for the invite. Absolutely. Thank it's you. great to have you, Jordan, too. Yeah, thank you. All right, let's touch on Saturday. Obviously, it was a very frustrating, uh, difficult loss uh, to Montana State. You guys had high hopes winning that game. You, you keep your playoff hopes alive. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. So you have the one week now against Sacramento State. How have you guys been able to readjust the mindset after Saturday? Nas, I'll let you go first. Uh, yeah. Um, obviously, not the outcome that we wanted on Saturday, but um, I am not nothing less than proud of the way uh, my brothers played as well as on the offensive side. Um, things didn't go our way, and uh, we should have capitalized on a lot of more things, and there are some de details that we um, should have locked in a little bit more on, but um, – Nothing less than proud, and uh, just looking forward to this week's state. I mean, uh, Coach Hawk said it um, uh, after the games that we could be sad on Saturday night and uh, Sunday, but come back on Monday, uh, it's a new week. Uh, have a have a smile on your face and get ready for that week. So um, I'm sure everybody and uh, all of our brothers are switch that uh, turn that switch to yep. get ready for for Sac State. So I'm looking forward to that. And you guys have been doing that every. Monday, so nothing really different, although it's just coming in the, the last stages of the year. Jordy, what was like the, the Monday morning meeting like? Because I know you guys have your 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 battle you know ground awards, right? right, right. Where you, you give them out. It's not necessarily for the, the people who had the best numbers or anything else. It's just for the people who contributed in some way towards that Aggie pride and, and made a difference. So how was the, the mood of that meeting? Right. I mean, you know, of course, everybody, you know, a little disappointed and sad about 
uh, the loss Saturday. But, um, you know, we always just try to embrace the best parts, you know, what, what we did bet, like the best. Um, and then those, like, those battlefield commissions you're talking about, those are, you know, more from, like, stuff during the week and, you know, effort and, and just, you know, contributing what you can contribute. Um, you know, just we always talk about, like, having to do your job and, you know, you know uh, just doing what you can for the team. And, you know, we have a lot of players that do that. And, you know, we're all, we're all together and everything. So, you know, we all do what we can do. We all contribute um, everything we can. And, you know, that, that helps us on game days and every day during the week. So it's really like a good team effort. And it obviously was a great celebration. Your, your last chance to play at UC Davis Health Stadium, the, the ceremony beforehand, you get to celebrate that with your family. What was it like being on the field? Uh, with all the people who mean something to you before that game, Nas? Um, for me personally, it meant a lot. Haven't seen my family um, probably in, I want to say, four to five months. Um, so that's a long time for me. And yep. coming from a Polynesian background, family's a heavy emphasis. So yep. just to have them welcome me out there and uh, being able to give my mom flowers and see my all of my relatives out there, that I wouldn't trade that for, for nothing else for sure. It's interesting because they're there for you but it's really a chance for you to thank them. Oh, yeah, absolutely. That was the biggest part is just, like, I got the opportunity to showcase the blessings that I received and um, be able to reciprocate that and gift them uh, for all the sacrifices they made to get me to, and help me to get to this point. Yep. Sure. Jordan, what were your feelings out there at the time? Oh, man, it was, it was, it was just so, so surreal. It was, it was, I don't know, it kind of felt like everything was moving in slow motion. Just yeah. as you're coming down the field, you see your whole family and, they're all smiling, and you're just trying to take everything in, like, as, as much as you can. But, uh, yeah, my family, is, they're always really supportive of me and try to they make it to almost every every game. And it was just it just it was a blessing to be able to have them up there and be able to, you know, have them come watch my, my last game at the stadium. Yeah, absolutely. Talking with Nelson Essie, Jordan Franklin here on the UC Davis Bud Light Football Coaches Show. Now, this year for you guys, obviously, you guys have had to fight adversity, but also injuries, you know, throughout the year. Nas, you had the – the thumb issue and Jordan you've been banged up throughout the season as well and I'm not saying that's not par for the course for football I know you guys are tough and it's just part of what you sign up for but just talk about battling through injuries week after week and, and what you do to grind that's part that's part of the game you know and um, uh, coach talks about just uh, players and teammates that he's been a part of and um, how uh, guys in the past have have fought through that and that that's a big part of a uh, Aggie football and so obviously we took that to heart and um, a lot of the guys brought the dog out in them and um, that that just resonated with them like we're, we want to represent Aggie pride to the to the fullest of our abilities and showcase the same thing and carry on that tradition so um, every single guy that's been battling injuries um, has taken that on with pride and um, if they do fall out the next guy up comes right back up and um, stumbles not not once and fulfills their job in, in that role you know Jordan for you right uh, no, I said it said it, said it well uh, we have it like that next man up mentality, and um, so what we try to do is we want to prepare that next guy as much as you can, so that when, say, one of the ones go down, and you're, you're able to have your backup come in and do do just as well and mm-hmm. not miss a beat. So, uh, but yeah, like you say, injuries are part of the game. Just you know, it's this is we got to fight through it. You know, don't we're not trying to dwell on it or anything, but we just you know do what we can do and give 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 it your all. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you know, it's just. It's difficult sometimes to be injured, but um, yeah, if you just do what you do, then, you know. You, you focus on the process and you take yourself out of the, the feeling of absolutely what it, what it feels like to be banged up. Yeah. Nas, for you, you're graduating, and you, you, you played rush position this year, kind of the rush backer. Obviously, there's a couple talented redshirt freshmen who are going to be taking your place and filling up and already are out there. Nick Eaton, who's had an incredible year. And then Devon Frazier, who had an incredible game on Saturday, had those six tackles, three and a half tackles for a loss. I would say the Aggies are in pretty good uh, stead for for the future with those guys. Absolutely. I feel that's something that we've lacked um, in the past just in terms of depth and um, just being able to like Jordan said, being able to prepare those younger guys for the roles that they uh, need to fill yep. come in when uh, they stand, when they tend to mature. And Nick Eden, 
uh, along with Devon and a bunch of other guys, Cade, uh, Peacock, and there's a bunch of other guys that are young and uh, um, our coaches do a really good job in terms of giving them playing time to gain that experience. Yep. And the younger guys do a really, really good job in terms of asking questions and watching film and just being able to understand that, yes, I am next up. And though it may not come in the time that I that I want, or even if it does, um, I need to be prepared and be able to fulfill that role when my time has come or my time is a. Uh, when my time is up and when my number gets called. So um, the younger guys do a really good job, and uh, I just want to tell the Aggie community, man, uh, the next generation that's coming up, man, be be excited because they got some good things in store for sure. Yeah, you guys play so many people on defense as it is. It's defense by committee, and one of the deepest position units has been the defensive line. What's it been like working with that group? Jordan? Oh, it's just a great group of guys. You know, I, I love going in every day and, you know, working with, uh, you know, each, each and every one of them. And Coach Hoop has done a phenomenal job of, always preparing us each and every day and, you know, trying to get us in the mindset that, you know, we've got to go out there and dominate it. You know, we yep. gotta, we got to – we're the first part of that line. So, you know, the game starts with us. And, you know, however the, the game goes, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be on us. So, um, yeah, he does a great job preparing us. Great group of guys. Um, good young talent, just like Nas says. We have good young talent, all mature. And, like, their playing experience – Gets more as it gets more and more, they'll, they'll get better and better. So, a lot of good things that come from them. And obviously, you have a big game on Saturday. It is Sacramento State, it is the Causeway Classic. It's always fun to end a season with a game against a rival. Talk about what this game means for you. Obviously, it's, it's your last game in an Aggie uniform. You're playing a rival, they're having a great year. You want to end their regular season at least on a sour note. So, give me all those feelings that you get the, the build up for this game. Yeah, Sac State is always always a big game. Always a rival. Um, they don't like us. We really don't like them either. Yeah. Uh, and you know, no matter whose record is what, you know, we always we always want to play hard and, and you know do our best against them because uh, you know they they have certain feelings towards us. So yeah, it's a big game. Um, it should be fun though. It's always a fun game playing them. Always good atmosphere. But yeah, we we try to get after them as much as we can. Nos. Yeah. Um, I just let Jordan go first. I know. I you're really know you're formulating your thoughts. Yeah, I got you. I Fine I time. That's a veteran move right yeah. there. That's a captain move. Yeah. Right. Um, personally, I don't I don't have any feelings towards them in terms of negativity, but um, uh, Coach Hawk always says it's always a nameless opponent, and uh, our opponent every single day and every single week is the man in the mirror. So uh, I like to take that um, – that type of mentality every single week. So in terms of this week, it's the same thing. So I, I want to capitalize on all the um, – or we want to capitalize on all the mistakes that we have made in the past, in the past game. and um, Just want to capitalize those and make sure that we harp on the things that they want to attack and in terms of our weaknesses and just being able to capitalize on those and be the best defense that we can be that Saturday. So um, nothing ill – Nothing, no, no ill thoughts toward uh, Sac State, but we tend to get out. We, we look forward to get out there for sure. Sure, you just want to make sure you get a win. Um, That's it. I know you guys are early in the week in terms of preparation here. So Sac State obviously has another running quarterback in Kevin Thompson who, who poses a lot of problems. They've got a great running back in Eliza, Eliza Dodson. They, they, they're explosive offensively. So having said that, how do you go about containing the Hornets? Um, what I feel like in this, in this year we've showcased that with – very good offenses we've also been able to showcase that brings the best out of our defense and so we look forward to that challenge in terms of stopping uh, that running quarterback and um, a, a great uh, a great running back as well and a couple of receiving threats but um, we tend to do we want to do our job yep. to the best of our ability and uh, we haven't got into the game plan yet but yep. um, for sure we definitely want to get after the quarterback so we look forward to that challenge and um, also shutting down the running back for sure so we we just want to whatever our game plan is that coach Tug got for us this week we want to just execute that to the best of our ability what do you think practice will be like this week i know you guys are following the same process but knowing that everything you go through will be the last time that you do it in an ag uniform what's that going to be like jordan you have any idea um I'm just I, for me. I'm just trying to you know keep it just like every other week. You know, yeah. I, I don't want to think about it too much and you know get too airheaded with everything like that. But um, yeah, I'm sure when after everything's done, then I'll be able to look back on it and just think about you know all the moments I've had and um, just you know my time being here and you know. But uh, yeah, this last week is it's, it's not it hasn't really fully hit me yet. No. But yeah, I'm sure it sure definitely will after the game on Saturday. Yeah, you'll know how special it is afterwards. Um, We've got Jake Mayer here. I'm going to be talking to your quarterback next segment. I know you guys are on the other side of the ball, but I want to hear your thoughts 
Jake Mayer, what he's meant to the UC Davis Aggies. Jake has been, since he came here, um, obviously he had to fight over the role in terms of he had to earn that in, in, in a sense. And um, ever since he came in and stepped into that leadership role, he has done nothing but the right thing to do every single every single week. Um, in season, off season, um, he has led us into the right direction and um, he has been a huge part and huge factor into um, developing this culture with the, the coaches as well as amongst all the other leaders, not just the captains on both sides of the ball. Um, but uh, that man right there for sure is uh, probably the epitome of Aggie pride and has taken that to heart and has done a great job in terms of leading us. Um, nothing but thankful for all the things that he's done and uh, has made not just the offense better, but defense better every single week. Yep, no, that's well said. All right, guys, thank you for coming on here. Best of luck this week. Enjoy every moment of it. And uh, let's get a W on Saturday. No doubt. Thank you. Yeah, thank All right, you. let's hear from Nasa Nessie, Jordan Franklin here. We're at Woodstock's Pizza. The Bud Light UC Davis Football Coaches Show moves on. Coming up next segment, we'll have Jake Mayer, the all-time yardage leader now in UC Davis history. This is Sports 1140 KHDK. Welcome back into the Bud Light UC Davis Football Coaches Show. We are at Woodstock's in downtown Davis. We want to thank Woodstocks for having us throughout the year for these coaches shows. It's been great being here right in the heart of downtown Davis. It'll be our final show for this season. Joining me now, a man who will sit in the record books for a long, long time in UC Davis football history, talking about the great Jake Mayer, who on Saturday passed the all-time yardage barrier, surpassing the great J.T. O'Sullivan in the first quarter of the game against Montana State. Jake, for, thanks for coming down here. I know it's uh, middle of preparation week, so I know I'm, I'm taking away some of that time. You'd much rather be breaking down tape than, than talking at the moment, but thanks for coming down here, right. and congratulations to you. Thank you for that, and thanks for having us. I mean, this is fun for us. We wouldn't, we wouldn't do it if it wasn't fun. Yep. So it was senior day on Saturday. You broke the record. Talk about the play, first of all. You hit Darius Livingston. He was wide open, and, and Darius is a guy who hasn't played a lot of late. It was interesting that you found him to, to break the record. Yeah, it was just our play-action play where we try to sneak the receiver across the line of scrimmage and wheel him up the sideline, and Darius ran that, you know, ran that play five, ten times during the week. So, um, you know, it wasn't a shock to – to have him out there and, and execute that play. He's, he's been working on that all year. So that's just kind of the next man up mentality. We're a tempo offense, so guys need breathers, and we're constantly subbing in and out. So um, it's really cool for him. You know, that's a memory that we'll have together you yeah. know, for the rest of our lives, and, and I know that meant a lot to him, so it's uh, pretty cool for him. Yeah, it was a great play. It was wide open on that, and I know it came during the, the middle of the game. Your, your sole focus is on – scoring winning all those things did you have a chance to reflect on that at all now that we've been a couple days past it um reflecting with coach plow a little bit uh when the game ended and obviously family members and the only reason why it really means something to me is because um you know of who it was with and uh you know the people that went into um reaching that number and and you know that, that that's what's really the most important thing you know none of this was done on my own or this is not a one-man thing. This is countless hours of preparation from receivers and offensive linemen and running backs and uh, Coach Plow and Coach Hawkins, um, you know, giving us, you know, the green light to, to throw the ball a lot and, and really uh, depend on our pass game. So that's the only reason why it means something to me is just because everybody that goes into it. Yeah, and how special was it, too? So many of the former quarterbacks recorded congratulation messages for you, in, including JT. That meant a lot, too. I, I mean, I, I respect the legacy of Aggie quarterbacks, um, you know, to the highest of my ability. I mean, those, those guys paved the way for, for a guy like me and, and, and put UC Davis quarterback play on the map. And anytime you can, you know, pay your respects to, to those guys and, and to hear it, you know, coming out of their mouths, coming back to me and, and our offense and what, what we were doing, what we've been doing here the past few years is uh, really special because it just shows how much they care and, and that they are invested in us. And as alumni, I, I, think that's, I think that's really important for a program. And, you know, in the next uh, years of my life, I'll, I'll be able to do the same thing and be able to give back and, and support whoever, whoever comes next. Yep, so. and of course, Scott Berry, part of our broadcast team, he couldn't be here today, but he wanted me to congratulate you. He, he wanted to be here, and I know he's enjoyed his conversations with you throughout the year. Awesome. 
It's great. I love talking to Scott. Um, you know, he gives me a lot of good advice just on mental preparation and, and uh, you know, just just always supporting me. And uh, to see him every week is really, really a joy for me because, you know, it's he's, he's a legend in my mind and, and, and a lot of Davis fans' minds for sure. Yep. So, so you said at 10,930 yards with one game to go to Causeway. We'll, we'll talk about that. Obviously, Saturday was a tough loss. You guys had some opportunities. I, I'm sure it was a tough one for you to swallow because you guys – you know, felt like you had a, a definite opportunity to win that game against Montana State. We definitely did. We left a lot out there, um, but that's uh, that's part of the game. That's part of playing a good opponent. They're gonna they're gonna make you show your hand throughout the game, and and it's up to you to be able to adapt on the fly and make adjustments on the fly. And unfortunately, we didn't make enough adjustments in order to to you know execute at a higher level. And um, you know, but that happens, and it's not the first time that's ever happened to us. You know, since I've been here in the past three years, and um, but you just learn from it, and you just got to keep keep going because there's always another game on your schedule until there's not. So um, we have a you know a worthy opponent next week, and we need to be able to execute at a at a higher level. Um, so you know, we just we just got to get back to work. It's all part of the process, right? Absolutely. Keeping the highs and the lows, and just keep working through it. That's really kind of what the the Aggie pride and what the the meaning is here right now. Absolutely, absolutely. You just got to get back on the horse and keep grinding it out. And um, you know, sometimes it works out for you, and and you're a champion, and and you know you're winning a bunch of games, and then other times, you know, and maybe it doesn't go your way. But um, you can't you can't obsess over what those results are um, because, you know, some of the time you, you can't always control them. You know, you can play really well and lose and you can play poorly and win. That's, that's just part of the game. And uh, that's a lesson that I think we've all learned this year is, uh, you know, you just got to on the things you can control and, and uh, let all the other stuff take care of itself. Yeah. How has it been for you this year? Obviously there's been a few injuries with the wide receiving crew, with the running back crew, and I, and I know that's part of football, and you just adjust and all of those things. Mm -hmm. You've done a great job doing that. But just talk about how you've had to deal with that throughout the season. Next man up. I mean, we that, that wide receiver room is very talented and has a lot of youth, and, um, you know, when the season ends, they're returning to every single one, last yeah. one of them. Yeah. Um, so their, their growth as a room um, – has gotten better and better by the week. Just thinking about where they were, you know, week one uh, compared to now in terms of experience and, and understanding, you know, the ups and downs that come with playing football at a high level and, and learning the, you know, how valuable consistency is. Um, it's just going to make them better players in the future. So, um, you know, regardless of who's out there, they know that, you know, our expectation as an offense is that we're going to play at a high level and we need to be efficient and we need to do do things the right way detail wise you know we, we we can't we can't you know plug different guys at different positions and have the details fall off you know that's that's always unacceptable with us you know with what our standard is so they understand that and they're getting better at that and and they're going to be an exciting group for years to come because they're going to be here for a long time yeah they're almost just all really young Makes you wish you had one more year of eligibility with some sure. of those guys coming back. Absolutely. One guy who's not coming back is Wes Priest, who's graduating as well, and he was one of your go-to guys throughout mm -hmm. the years. Talk about your connection with Wes. It's been a fun three years. I mean, the, the, the way that guy dominates down in the red zone, and he's really a matchup nightmare for teams because they're not sure if, if they want to go the route of putting a linebacker on him or a safety on him or, or risking putting a corner out there. I mean, he has the ability to be athletic and make – you know unorthodox catches and and you know as you've seen and he's also you know six foot six and 250 pounds and not careful then uh he can really manhandle you so it's been really really uh fortunate for me to, to always have that to kind of fall back on when we get down the red zone and really simplify things you know we sometimes you know we can get down there inside the five and not get too creative just you know understand that we have you know a guy of that kind of caliber and we can throw him the ball whenever we want so um, that's been really awesome. Our friendship, you know, goes beyond football, though. Um, you know, we spend countless hours together, and, and a big group of us will always hang out at the house and just talk about life and meet each other's families and spend some time. So football, all football aside, that, that guy's a brother to me, and, um, you know, I'll be seeing him, you know, even when our careers might go separate ways, but uh, we'll always stay in touch. So. You might be playing against each other on Sundays. We'll see. Who knows? Yeah, we will see. That, <laughs> that, that'd be really, really cool, and, um, you know. 
we'll see what happens. But that's that's not that's not necessarily up to us. That's uh, sure. we'll just leave that up to the man above and, and see what happens. Yeah. Speaking of family, you have such a, a great family, so supportive, and it was senior day, and you had a chance to to celebrate with them on the field and everybody's there for you but as i said to jordan and nos it's really a chance for you to thank them for everything absolutely you know those senior days um they're more about the families and they're more about the parents and it's about recognizing the sacrifice that they have uh, given to us as players for the past three to four years sometimes even more than that um you know the constant travel that they do um coming to road games coming to home games driving eight hours, staying up late at night, you know, stressed out about booking hotel rooms and feeding everybody and, you know, making sure that everything's running smoothly is, uh, is something that um, means a lot to us players, you know, because it's, it's not always fun to, you know, play this game and work really hard and, and uh, not have that support from your family because, you know, there's going to be a lot of different people that have different opinions of you and, and, um, you know, but it means a lot to you to know that you always have those people to fall back on and yeah. support, you know. So that, that means a lot to us. That, that, that was really, really cool, the, the way that we do things here and, and putting the families out in the field. And, and, you know, for them, that's just a surreal moment because they feel like they're really, really involved, and, and, and that's awesome. Absolutely. It's been such a journey for you going back east your first year, coming mm -hmm. back, playing at Long Beach City College, and then finding – a home at UC Davis has been quite the journey for you as a college. Quite athlete. the journey. I did not think I was going to end up um, in California, you know, for my years in college, you know, going as far as I possibly can on the other side of the country and, and go learning different things about myself and, and how and what I wanted to truly be. And, you know, it was really during that time of going all the way out there where I discovered that, you know, I really want to be serious about this football stuff and, and I really wanted to make something of, of a football career and, and I wanted to give everything I had and, and to end up here at the best university in California um, to play for the best coaches and, uh, you know, make friends that I'll have forever is, yeah. is, is, is everything that I could have ever wished for and then some. So uh, this, you know, this journey is going to end. Uh, very soon, unfortunately, but um, it's something that uh, is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah, getting to play with Coach Hawk and obviously so close with Tim Plow and your quarterback meetings have become legendary now because basically you're running those meetings at, at, at this point and I've heard stories of when scouts come in and they watch you kind of lead the meetings and everything. They almost leave jaw dropped afterwards. Can you, can you talk about how, how your attention to detail and, and what you do in those meetings and how you got to that point? Yeah, well, you know, Coach Plow does such a great job that he's really instilled in us the details of everything. And, and a lot of the times, you know, it just came to the point where, where Coach Plow has constantly been coaching us up on, on, you know, a few things every single week. And eventually it just becomes muscle memory to us. And, and we're able to go in the meeting room then and explain exactly what he's been telling us and me at least for the last three years. So there came a point where Coach Plow decided to kind of give me the reins in, in some of those meetings. And, and I love it because, you know, we're the ones that are out in the field. And I think Coach Plow really understands that along with Coach Hawk. Um, it's a lot of player ownership stuff. So, you know, I'm able to tell all the guys that are in the meeting room, like, hey, this is what I see when we're out in the field. And, and I take their feedback and I, and I try to listen to, to what, how they feel about certain plays and certain coverages. And then we're able to talk it out right then and there in the meeting room. And, and by the time we get to Saturday, we're on the same page and it's not a guessing game. Because sometimes, you know, when, when, if the coach leading the, is leading the meeting all the time, you know, they know what they want to do and the other coaches know what they want to do. Yeah. But does that mean the players really are on the same page? Uh -huh. So I think that's been a really, really cool thing for us this year is to get on the same page. And, you know, we're able to make adjustments on the fly as players because we already talked out the situation yeah. two days ago, you know, so that that's been really, really fun. And and, you know, regardless of if a scout sees that or not or, or whoever, a visitor comes and checks that out, that that's not overly, you know, important to us. You know, we're, we're there to take care of our business. And, and if anybody wants to know about it and, and is impressed with it, then that's awesome. But, you know, it's all about our preparation and, and making sure that we're taken care of as an offense. Yeah. I know you have plenty of game left in you in the future. Have you thought about coaching at some point? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's why I, I talk to Coach Hawk a lot, and I talk to Coach Plow as much as I can. Um, I'm always trying to pick their brains on, on different things, and I pay attention in, in, in the meetings after a win, after a loss. 
um, you know, how they handle that and, and how they how they lead a team day in and day out. Um, I have a lot of notes on that kind of stuff. And, you know, with my dad being a coach, um, it's just really, really been inspiring for me. Um, I can't I, I can't I can't imagine myself living life without sports and yeah. competition and uh, the concept of team and impact and inspiring other people and you know just every all the little nuances that come with it i can't imagine a life without it so um it's definitely something i think about all the time and i don't know when that day's going to come but when it does I'm, I'm ready to go i'm i'm totally all in about it well you're going to be throwing it for a while here still uh including on saturday so let, let's talk about the game versus the hornets it is the last game for you in an aggie uniform it's a big game it's a rivalry game all of those things give us give us your thoughts as we look towards saturday well, it's a great it's a great opportunity for us. You know, it's the last time that this group of guys are going to be on the same field together. So, uh, you know, if that doesn't motivate you and inspire you, and then I don't know what will. Um, I know that'll be my message to the team: is hey, we get one more week to be together and to you know make some history and and do some really cool things and have a lot of fun. So, um, if you don't want to be a part of that, uh, then I don't know what to tell you. Uh, so, you know, that's that's really what's important to me, um, wh- regardless of the opponent. You know, I know they're doing a great job, and and I have a lot of respect for the coaching staff that they have over there. And you know, some of the players that I know personally are are good dudes. Um, but you know, it's it's all about you know rising to the to the level of your competition and, and playing at a high level, regardless of who it is. So um, you know, that's, that's really all I got. I got really. you. Well, that's more than enough right there. Um, I know you really haven't had a chance to think about this, but. The record books, you're, you're going to live in those record books for a long, long time. That's something you'll, you'll think about after your playing days. But, I mean, just thinking about your three years and, and all the things that you've accomplished, have you had a chance to, to take that in at all yet? Not at all. Not at all, to, be, to, be, to be honest with yeah. you. Um, like I kind of said earlier, the only reason why any of this stuff means something to me is because of the people that are a part of it and the people that were there to do it. Uh, with me and, and really us together um, if if you don't have in my opinion if you don't have those people that are building the relationships on the way with you um, you know whether you're on top and you're winning championships or you're going through adversity then none of it's really worth it in my opinion you know if you do all this stuff and by yourself and and if you're in it for if you're in playing football because you're all about the individual recognition and accolades and record books then you're doing it for the wrong reasons because those things you know those are just that's just stuff on paper it has, it has no it has no powerful impact on someone's life I, I mean I hope that you know some of the teammates that I have you know if they when they ever speak about me I hope they just you know think I'm you know, just myself and a, and a good dude and someone that they like being around and because Lord knows I love being around them so um, that's all that really matters to me when it comes to that stuff well I know they all love being around you they've loved you being their team captain Jake, it's been a pleasure calling your games the last three years. It's been unbelievable. Uh, you've been a class act and a, a tremendous competitor on the field, and I can't wait for Saturday for one more time. No doubt. Thanks, Scott. Everything that you've done for us, supporting us every step of the way, and um, you know, I know my family loves your calls, and I know my brothers love listening to you. You know, even even when they're not necessarily at the game. So, really appreciate you for everything. Thank you, Jake, for saying that. Appreciate it. Let's yep. hear for Jake Mayer here down at Woodstocks. As he's getting ready for the big game on Saturday. What a career he has had. Arguably the greatest in UC Davis history. People will talk about that afterwards, but Jake will go down certainly as one of the all-time greats. We'll take the break. Dan Hawkins will rejoin me. It's the Bud Light UC Davis Football Coaches Show, Sports 1140 KHDK. And welcome back into the Bud Light UC Davis Football Coaches Show, rejoined by Dan Hawkins. As the Aggies get ready to take on the Hornets, the 66th annual Causeway Classic presented by Pepsi, 2 o'clock at Hornets Stadium. Our thanks again to Nasa Nessie, Jordan Franklin, and Jake Mayer all making time to come down here in their final week of preparation as a part of the UC Davis football team. And Dan, it's one question I've asked you or just mentioned 12 straight weeks, and I've meant it sincerely heartfelt but every time I get a chance to talk to some of your players I'm just overwhelmed I'm awed at the class and just the character that they show yeah we're really blessed they're unbelievable people um, and that's why they come to Davis and uh, uh, be a part of this community and we certainly facilitate that but 
Uh, I always tell the parents of these guys they should all get together and write a book on how to raise kids yeah. because they've done such an amazing job. And then they come here. And then I also take a lot of pride in how we mentor them, too, in our football program and our coaches and the way we uh, look at the big picture with them. I mean, we want them to grow. We want them to mature. We want them to be decision makers. Uh, we treat them maturely. We treat them like young men. And uh, sometimes I think you, you have to treat them that way before they, they become that way. Uh, but I really like our program. I like the culture and uh, I told our guys this morning, just uh, I wanted Aggie football to be a powerful, positive force in their lives and at the university and to really develop that. And uh, But, yeah, they're, they're certainly unique for those guys to come to a university like this and compete academically and compete athletically. And it's really fun to be around them every day. It really is. Absolutely. And I know you talk about the champions aren't defined solely by wins and losses. Yeah, that's not, uh, again, you're defined by your character. And uh, be, you're, you become a champion way before you win a championship. And these guys are doing championship things. We have not had uh, the score go how we want it to go. But that's not the only way we judge how things go. We're continuing trying to reinvent ourselves and throw ourselves in the fire and be risk takers and set goals and deal with adversity and take responsibility and vision success and have high standards and all those things you would want your spouse, your employee, your student, your next-door neighbor to have. Absolutely. All right. It is the Causeway Classic on Saturday. Dan, you've played in it. You've coached in it. Just want to get your thoughts. Has this game changed at all from the time you played in it to, to where it is now? Uh, well, you've both seen both programs rise for sure um, and the whole era of scholarships, and I think both programs have gone through uh, – growing pains to some degree to get from non-scholarship division two to the scholarship fcs and so you've seen spurts and growth from both both programs uh you still have the intensity though and you still have a lot of people that know each other we know a lot of the guys on their staff and you know obviously chris richardson's got two boys in our program here so you have that that thing going on we like i said we know a lot of the coaches uh, on their team and we recruited a lot of their guys so there's a lot of cross-pollination there yep and uh the two teams combined are going in for the most wins. This is trivia here. Since 1982, you were a part of that team. The Aggies went into the Causeway Classic 8-0, and Sac State 8-1. and By the way, you guys won that game 51-6 as you, you went on to the national championship game that year. But obviously to say these are two very good teams coming into the game on Saturday. Yeah, they are, and they've, they've done a nice job. They've overcome some injuries, played well. They beat Montana. They did not beat Weber. They're in a three-way tie. For the conference championship, have battled a lot of teams and played real well, and were able to overcome the loss of their quarterback down the stretch. And uh, they certainly deserve to be where they're at. Yep. And again, you'll be facing another team with a, a quarterback that can really throw the ball and can really run the ball in Kevin Thompson. Yeah, du dual threat. Uh, they they were really dynamic three years ago when we played them, and they beat us over there. And I think the game was 172 to 163 yeah. or something like Over that. Over 100 points in that game, um, yeah. Something like that. Um, and you've got a lot of those pro players back in this game. So, And they were extremely beat up last year. Yep. And Kevin was hurt. And uh, I think Dodson played a little bit in that game. But, you know, Georgia Bina was hurt. So it's hard to, hard to get any momentum when all your guys are down. Yeah, and obviously you mentioned the D-line, George Obina, who broke their school record for most sacks. They're, they're a very strong D-line. Your O-line's going to have to come and play their A-game on Saturday. Yeah, they will. And, uh, you know, Andy Thompson does a great job with their defense, and uh, they're ranked near the top, if not at the top, of nearly every defensive category in the conference. So uh, we'll have our hands full, that's for sure. You will. And uh, obviously defensively for you, I, I meant to bring it up in the first segment, but uh, – Defensively, we've been talking, It's you've played so many players on the defensive side, and on Saturday, Devon Frazier, another redshirt freshman, stepped up and, and just had a great game, six tackles, three and a half tackles for losses, first sack of the year. When you look at that combination of, of Frazier and Eaton, both freshmen, that, that's got to get you excited for the future. Yeah, and uh, Frazier started off playing corner for us and uh, started putting on weight and did such a nice job. We said, hey, let's move him down close to the box just because physically he can hang in there and then he can really run. And he made a, he made a great play on the other side of the ball uh, the other night where he ran somebody down uh, on the other side of the line of scrimmage uh, on the other side of the field. So we're uh, looking forward to having those guys and developing those guys over the years. Sure, absolutely. And then you look across the, the O-line and you bring everybody back <laughs> starting. 
Yeah, well, everybody comes back, you know, without Jake, Jake, Matt Hyman, um, and Wes Reese, yeah. and, and uh, Will Martin. So, um, yeah, we're going to have a lot of people back. But we had a lot of people back this year. So, again, does that mean something? Yeah, it does. Do you like that? Yeah, but we we got to go prove it. That will all start in the weight room and the classroom. And, uh, like I said, we're going to have to go back to the starting line and start over. And, obviously, you're, you're starting the week of preparation for – uh, Sacramento State, we're, we're taping this show on a, on a Monday. You've got your install practice coming up. Uh, is the week exactly the same for you? I know yep. there's more activities in terms of the lunch in and some of the media type stuff, but from a football standpoint, it's the same week yeah. for you. Yeah, we're not changing anything, and uh, we're going to be business as usual. Okay. The lunch in, do you enjoy that? That's always a time for both schools to come together and, and kind of celebrate football uh, in the region. Yes and no. It's always kind of interesting how it goes down. <laughs> Josh Fleshman's out here laughing a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Uh, yeah, we'll see how it goes. But it's a good celebration for the community of football. I guess is the bigger picture this week, getting the focus of football. Yeah, we'll see what kind of crowd we get at the luncheon and see how it goes. And certainly, the basis of it is is certainly well meaning. Yep, absolutely. All right, coach. Well, it's been a privilege. It's been a pleasure uh, being a part of these coaches shows all season long. Appreciate, appreciate your time. You, appreciate your insights, and I also appreciate. Uh, all the football I've had a chance to learn this year, I appreciate the inside look within the team. That's been a real uh, special You're privilege. Welcome. Thanks for being great. the voice of the eggs. I enjoy it. All right, let's hear for Dan Hawkins one last time here. It's the Bud Light UC Davis Football Coaches Show from Woodstock's Pizza. It's been a pleasure bringing you this show all year long. Again, the 66th Annual Causeway Classic presented by Pepsi will be Saturday afternoon, Hornet Stadium, 2 o'clock. Make sure to get out there and root on your Aggies. If you can't make it, you can always listen to it on Sports 1140. Beginning at 1.30, the countdown, the kickoff show, will have it for you. Scott Berry, Doug Kelly will be with me on the broadcast of the game. Until then, enjoy your week, and as always, go Axe.